Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you what happens when you apply the Width tool to pattern brushes in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to make each of the designs here on my artboard using these three pattern brushes. And if you'd like directions on how to make those pattern brushes, at the end of this video, I'll leave a link to a quick tutorial that gives you step-by-step -step directions. Right now, let's move to a new document and get started. I'm going to get the paintbrush tool, keyboard shortcut B, and draw out a wavy line on my artboard. And then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and select the path. I'll move over to the brushes panel, and I'm going to choose the squares pattern brush and apply it to the path. And then we're ready to begin working with the width tool. Now the width tool is located on the left toolbar. Looks like this little flower with a hashtag through it. And the keyboard shortcut, which I'll be using throughout this video, is Shift W. And if you don't see all these tools on the left side of your workspace, you can come down and click on this little ellipsis and then go up to the icon in the top right corner and choose Advanced instead of Basic. And I am going to be using a tool later in this video where you're going to have to have advanced checked in order to have access to it. All right, let's get that width tool, keyboard shortcut shift W. And when I activate the tool with that keyboard shortcut, you can see I have a wavy line next to my cursor and that just shows me I have it turned on. I'll start with the beginning anchor and as I come over here you can see that that wavy line changes to a plus sign which means that Illustrator is ready to add a width point to my stroke. I'll click down on the point and I'm going to keep my mouse pressed down. I'll pull away from the point and then I'm going to come right back on top of the point until I see that the width is zero inches in the little gray box next to my cursor. Then I'll release my mouse. Now I'll come over somewhere in the center of the stroke and I'm going to add another width point. I'll click down on the point hold my mouse down and drag away from that stroke until I have 0 .006 width and then release my mouse. Now we'll come to the ending anchor and we're going to click and drag away from it first and then come back on top of it and I have a width of 0 .0 inches and I'll release my mouse. When I created this pattern brush, I set the colorization to tint so I can come in and change the color of the stroke and it'll change the color of this pattern brush. So I'll come over to the properties panel and here with the stroke color, I'm going to click here and that brings up my color options and I'll change this to green and then click to deselect this. Now I'm going to get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. Well, now I have my pattern brush formatted with the width and the color that I want. And the neat thing about pattern brushes is that until I make a change, Illustrator is going to paint with this pattern brush. So let's delete this and get the paintbrush tool, keyboard shortcut B, and I'll show you. I'll drag out a stroke and Illustrator does remember that formatting. And look how cool these look. I can make this look really quite natural and organic. And if I want to change the color of just some of the leaves, I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and hold down the shift key. And I'll just select a few of these and come over to the properties panel and change this to a dark green. And maybe we'll do a couple of these in a lighter green. And now we have our first example of what you can do with the width tool and a pattern brush. Okay, I'm going to select all of this and delete it. Now I'll show you something cool that you can do with text. I'll get the pencil tool, keyboard shortcut N, and I'll draw out the letter S. Now I need to apply a pattern brush, so I'll come to the brushes panel and we're going to use the squares pattern brush again. I'll go to the properties panel and I'm going to change the color to black and reduce the weight of the stroke to 0.5. Now I'll get the width tool, keyboard shortcut shift W, and I'm going to start on the left side of the letter. I'll place a width point here and I'm going to click and drag to make this area wider. And then I'm going to come up to the top and we'll make it skinny. I'll pull away and back in. And I think that might be just a 
little too much so I'm gonna undo that keyboard shortcut command Z let's try again here I'll pull away just a little bit further I like that better now I'll come to the ending anchor and I'll pull away and then back into a point and get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V and I like the way this is formatted I'm gonna leave this just the way it is without any other changes and just like in the last example, Illustrator does remember this same formatting. So if I want to add another letter, I'll move this out of the way and get the paintbrush tool, keyboard shortcut B. And this time I'll draw out an R. And even though it's a different letter, Illustrator is applying that same pattern brush with those width changes that we created in the letter S. This is another way that you can be creative with your fonts and make some very unique designs. I'll select these letters now and delete them because we need to move on. There's a lot more to see. For the next example, I'm going to use the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, and I'll click on the artboard to open the rectangle dialog box. I'm going to type in four inches for the width, tab down, and type in four inches for the height, and say OK, and that gives me a four inch square. I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'll move this to the center of the artboard. I want this to have a white fill, and we're going to leave the stroke at one point, and then come to the brushes panel, and I'm going to apply the checkerboard pattern brush to this rectangle. And we're going to do some fun things now with the width tool. So let's get it, keyboard shortcut, shift W. I'll start in the left corner. I'm going to count over one square and come to the stroke and I'll drag down to 0 0.005 and then release my mouse. I'll come to the right side here and do the same thing, 0 0.005. Then I'm going to come to the center and I have smart guides turned on so I know that I'm right at the center point in the top of my frame. I'll drag this width point to 0 0.02 and then release my mouse. And I have a pretty cool little shape here. I'm going to speed up the video and I'll do the other three sides. I'm just making sure that as I drag out these width points, I have them in the same place and the same width on all four sides so that it looks uniform. I'm finished applying the width tool. Now I want to round the corners. So I'm gonna get the direct selection tool, keyboard shortcut A, and that allows me to grab hold of a handle. I'll just barely drag a little bit, 0.2 inches, and that rounds everything out. Now it's a little rough around the edges here. So I'm going to get the smooth tool. This is the tool I said you have to have the advanced setting on your toolbar to get. It's hidden behind the pencil tool. I'll click and hold and I have a pop-out menu that I can come over and choose the smooth tool. And I'm going to just very slightly drag over these anchors enough to smooth these edges. So here we go, and here we go, and here we go. And now that looks much better. If I want to change the color, I did set my pattern brush to be able to change the stroke color, but that only allows me to turn everything that's black to a different color. I'm going to go ahead and convert this pattern brush to outlines so that I have a little bit more flexibility with the changes that I'm going to make. So I'll come up to Object down to path and outline stroke. And now all of my anchors are selectable. I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'll click on the artboard to deselect everything. The first thing I'm gonna do is work on these little pointed areas here that I don't like. I'm gonna use the eraser tool, keyboard shortcut shift E, and I'm gonna enlarge the head of this a little bit by pressing on the right bracket and then we're going to drag over this and we'll kind of soften these lines here. And I'm going to speed the video up as I continue to go around and smooth these corners. If you do something you don't like, just undo it, keyboard shortcut command Z and keep pressing that until you get back where you want to be and then just start over. There we go. Almost there. And let's select this and get this smooth tool and we'll 
play with that a little bit. Now let's get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'm pleased with that. So we'll leave it there. And now we're going to get the direct selection tool, keyboard shortcut A. I'll hold the shift key down and I'm going to select some of these squares. And I'll change these to purple and then click on the artboard to deselect those and then hold the shift key down and I'll choose a few more. We'll make these orange and click on the artboard to deselect these and then I'll hold the shift key down again and we'll select a few more and I'll change these to blue. Now you have another really fun way to combine the width tool with the pattern brush in Adobe Illustrator. Let's select our frame here and delete it and move on. For the next example, I'll get the ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and click on the artboard to open the ellipse dialog box. I'll type in 4 inches for the width, tab down and type in 4 inches for the height, and say OK. Now I'll open the brushes panel and I'm going to apply the circles pattern brush and then get the width tool, keyboard shortcut shift W, and I'll place a width point at the top center of my ellipse and drag straight down all the way to the center of the ellipse and release my mouse. Right now it's not very attractive, but hang with me for a minute. I'm going to come to the properties panel and click on the word stroke and that opens the stroke dialog box. About halfway down we have an option to choose dashed line. I'll click this box and already our design is beginning to look more interesting. I'm going to change the dash to 20 points and tab over and change the gap to 20 points as well. And then up here on the weight of the stroke, I'm going to reduce this to five points and click on the artboard to deselect this. Now I like this design, but if I wanted to keep changing it, I could do it in several ways. I could change the weight of the stroke. I can change the size of the dash. We can change this to 10 and tab over and do 10 here. You can make whatever changes you want. I'm going to undo those changes. Keyboard shortcut Command Z and Command Z. I do want to change the color so I'll come to the properties panel and we'll choose this light blue and I also want to add a black stroke. To do that I have to convert the pattern brush to outlines so I come up to object down to path and choose outline stroke. Now I'm able to add a stroke but if I add the stroke now, I'm going to end up having a stroke on my original ellipse and I don't want that. So I'll click on the artboard to deselect everything and get the direct selection tool, keyboard shortcut A. And now I can come over and select the ellipse and press the delete key and I'll have to press it twice to get rid of the ellipse. And then I'll get the selection tool again, keyboard shortcut V select everything that's remaining and come over and add a black stroke and click on the artboard. And this is how I ended up with a blue design with a black stroke on it. Now I'm going to make our sunset. I'll choose the design. I'm going to remove the stroke. So I'm going to come over to the left toolbar and click on the gradient icon. And then I'm going to double click on the gradient slider on the right side. So double click here. And that brings up a color palette. I'm going to choose this orange right here. Then I'll close out the dialog box and I'm going to get the lasso tool, which is keyboard shortcut Q. And I'll come around here and select some of these lower rays and press the delete key to get rid of them. And now I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. And I'm going to turn on my grid. I'll select my sun rays here and now I'm going to move these rays where they're centered on a dark gray line and they're resting on a dark gray line. That way I can get this all lined up right and then I'll get the ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and then I'm going to drag out an ellipse and I'll kind of play with it to, to get the right size here. Then I'll get the rectangle tool and I want it to line up right on this line as well. So. I'll drag this on top of the ellipse. I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, select the ellipse and the rectangle, and get the shape builder tool, keyboard shortcut shift M. And now I hold down the option key and drag across the parts that I don't want. 
then get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. I'll select all of the design and group it, keyboard shortcut command G. Now click on the artboard and then come over and click on the grid to hide that. And now I have a sunset that was created with the circle pattern brush. All right, let's close this one up. And I have one more example to show you. This time we're gonna make a fancy little arrow. I'll get the pencil tool, keyboard shortcut in, and I'm gonna make a curvy line. I'll come to the properties panel and remove the fill color and I'll change this stroke to black and increase the weight to two points. Now I'll go to the properties panel and click on the word stroke and that opens the stroke dialog box. So about two thirds of the way down, we have our arrowheads bins, and there are two of them. One is for the beginning anchor. That's where I started my path. And the second bin is for the ending anchor, and that's where I ended my path. So I'll press here to open up this bin, and I'm gonna choose arrow seven. And this is a pretty small arrowhead. I'm gonna change the scale of the arrowhead, but not the weight of the stroke. I come down below the bin where I have my arrowhead, and I'm gonna change the scale to 500%, and then click on the artboard to close the dialog box. Now I'll open the brushes panel and I'm gonna apply the square pattern brush to our stroke. Now I'll get the width tool, keyboard shortcut shift W, and I'll start at the point just right after the arrowhead. I'll click to place my width point and then I'm going to drag out and then I'm gonna go back in to 0 .004 and release my mouse. And then I'll come to the beginning anchor. And I'm gonna drag this out to 0 .023 and release my mouse. And here I have a neat little arrow. And just like with the other pattern brushes, Illustrator is gonna remember this formatting, including that arrowhead, so that when I get the paintbrush tool, if I haven't changed the pattern brush, that's what it's gonna make. So I'm gonna delete our example and get that paintbrush tool, keyboard shortcut B. Now I can drag out an arrow any direction that I want, and Illustrator is gonna format it just like I created the original design. So now you've learned how to make the designs that I had on my artboard when we started this video. But I hope what you've really seen is the endless possibilities there are when you combine the pattern brushes with that width tool. And I didn't even show you everything the width tool can do. At the end of this video, I'm gonna leave you a link to a 10 minute tutorial that shows you all the different functions of the width tool. I hope you'll go check it out. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, would you do me a favor and just click the subscribe button right now? It'll help me and it helps you not miss any of my future tutorials. Thanks for being with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this. Bye now.